So every now and then, Konami will release a brand new deck, and the only thing I can think of is... Huh. Yeah, that's going to be cancer in a couple of weeks. So you guys remember Lunalite, right? A deck that's entire goal in life was just waiting for your opponent to summon a monster in attack position. Then you'd activate your fusion spell in hand, sending another Lunalite from hand or field to the graveyard in combination with a fox, which might also come from hand or field, depending on if you open polymerization or your fusion spell, or if your opponent even has an extra deck monster on the field or not. This would then reduce one of their monsters attack to zero. Then once your fusion monster is out, you'd have to tribute off another Lunalite monster to finally dick your opponent. Now imagine, instead of needing to open all of those resources, all you needed was just one card. So here's today's deck list. Now just a reminder for the deck list, if you're enjoying today's video and want to see more content just like this in the future, especially more new box content, as I have Mermails, I have Paleos, I have Trick Stars, I have a whole bunch of videos lined up, so if you're interested in any of that stuff, or if you happen to be a returning viewer, as apparently only about 50% of the people watching this or even subscribed to the channel, yet nearly all of you are returning viewers who have seen my stuff before. So if you find yourself, keep coming back to the channel and want to see more content from me in the future, remember to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel down below. Alright, let's get into the deck list. So this deck list is exceptionally brain damaged, and I mean brain damaged. You do not need any sort of brain or intelligence to know how to play this deck list. You just need to learn the basic combo, then know how to enter the battle phase. This deck list is exceptionally easy, and it's the exact same thing every single game. And it's all based around the brand new card, number C32, Shark Drake Weiss. This card requires 4 level 4 water monsters to summon, or you can just summon it by using a shark drake on the field and just slap this thing on top of it. This card is pretty similar to Utopia Ray. During either player's turn, if you have 1000 or less life points, you attach one exceed material from this card, banish one monster in your graveyard, then target one face up monster on the field, that tug's attack and defense become zero until the end of the turn. So essentially, you summon this thing out, this effect by the way is not once per turn, so you can use it multiple times a turn, and then you just dick over one of your opponent's zero attack monsters. Now you've probably noticed that this card only has 2800 attack, which is obviously not going to be enough to lethal your opponent. Well that's where the skill comes in, as this skill essentially has two effects. The first one being, it just puts a nice Xyz Revive Splash straight into your graveyard, which is essentially just kind of like Mass Change for your Xyz monsters, as it just takes your rank 3s and turns them into rank 4s. So essentially it what makes this deck a one card combo, since obviously if you can get Behemoth Shark out, you can bring out your rank 3 Nightmare Shark, activate the trap card in graveyard, summon out your, shape, your Shark Drake, and then summon out your Y straight on top of that. So essentially, if you can ever get a hold of Buzzsaw Shark, you can get a hold of your Behemoth Shark, and you'll have a one card combo going straight into Ice. Then we have the second part of the skill, which basically, in addition to the following effect, can be used once per duel, by paying life points to make your life points equal to 1000, obviously the number required to activate your Weiss's effect. During this turn, monsters you control that have number 32 Sharp Drake's Exceeds material can inflict double damage. So obviously, 2800 attack, your opponent has zero attack on their monster, they're getting OTK'd. As for the rest of the deck list, you'll probably notice I'm just running a buttload of back crow removal, as essentially in Duel Links' current metagame, you'll probably notice that maybe every single deck list outside of Galaxy Eyes isn't relying on monster disruption, it's relying on back crow to protect it. So if you just run a shit ton of back crow removal, going second, your win rate's going to be somewhere over the 80% mark. So essentially, if they have nothing to protect themselves, they're going to die every single time. And for the few times they are a deck list like Galaxy Eyes that does summon a big monster you have to deal with, or if they're going to set a monster in defense position, I'm also running a couple of Kaijus which contributed off, giving your opponent a monster in attack position that you can activate your Weiss's effect on. Now there is one other brand new addition to this deck list, and that is of course the Xyz Remora. Now this card I know a lot of people have been cutting from their deck list, but honestly I feel like you can't actually cut this card, as essentially, just like if you open a kaiju, if your opponent sets a monster in defense position, you won't have an out to it unless you draw your kaiju. 
or you could open this card. As this card essentially allows you to get out two Xyz monsters, one being your massive OTK if it hits them in the face, and of course a copy of your Spider Shark to then deal with whatever defense position monster your opponent has summoned so you can actually hit them in the face. So it's essentially another out if you don't open a Kaiju for that one particular scenario, which honestly doesn't happen that often as most deck lists do summon something in attack position, but if it does happen, this does help you deal with it. Now this card is really cool. You can special summon this card by detaching two Xyz materials from your monsters you control. When you do, you can target two level 4 fish monsters in your graveyard, special summon those monsters in defense position. Their effects are negated, they cannot attack or change their battle positions, and cannot be used for Xyz material for an Xyz summon, except for the Xyz summon of a water monster. So, you summon out your spider shark, which by the way doesn't actually need material for its effect of when it goes to the graveyard summon something back, obviously, so it's Basically the best monster you can summon that's a rank 4 that doesn't really need materials to have some kind of use to it. This will then give you 3 materials on board, then go into your behemoth, go into your spider, blah 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 blah, and you'll still be left with a level 4 on the field, which as you will notice in one of the gameplays, actually came up to be fairly relevant. Alright, now to address the massive elephant in the room. What exactly does this decklist do going first? And to answer your question, it doesn't. Yeah, this deck list is entirely designed to go second, which basically means if you're going first, your win rate should probably be something like 40 to 45%, but thankfully in the current meta, even if you did absolutely nothing and summoned absolutely no monsters, which by the way, this deck list doesn't often have that kind of problem. If you open a copy of Buzzsaw and a copy of your beautiful princess, you can just use one of them since you have another follow up on the next turn. So you can just go into something like a Spider Shark to just basically survive the turn or an Abyss Dweller to try to stop some annoying decks. Or, obviously we have Kite Roid which also protects you, but essentially, even if you have absolutely nothing, thanks to the current meta being sort of slow, even if you're just setting one monster and passing, a lot of the time, your opponent just can't kill you. Salamangre is in a deck list, it's currently the most popular deck list, and it's a deck that doesn't really do that much damage on its first turn, it doesn't really summon a whole bunch of stuff. So essentially, this deck list's entire goal is to have an 80 to 90% win rate going second, and going first, you have like a 40%. Therefore, even if you lose a bunch of games, you're going to win a whole bunch more. This deck list is essentially just going to be one of those Casey Cup farming deck lists where it just wins a shit ton of games before losing a shit ton of games. Alright guys, that's going to do it for the deck list portion of the video. The rest of you will be gameplay showcasing this deck list in action, and without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, let's get into the replays. So with this deck list in particular, I played 10 games with it, and I won 7 of them, which is a pretty good scoreline. It did take me a few tries to get a ratio that I liked, especially when I decided that let's just give up on going first at all, remove all the trap cards, any kind of that bullshit, and just run a shit ton of back for removal. Then I had a bunch of success. As you'll see, yeah, 7 wins out of 10, that's pretty good, that's a rank up. Alright, let's get into the actual gameplay though. So I have a bunch of gameplays to show you guys. Unfortunately, there's not going to be a huge amount of variety in the replays as, well, the deck list is the same thing every time, so, yeah, hopefully you guys will enjoy it anyway. Alright, so this, oh, this replay was actually a banger. So this was versing a Resonator deck list. Now this deck list, as, you'll, as you know, does a bunch of damage straight to your opponent, but if they have a shit ton of life points, you can't actually OTK them. Unless, of course, you're like me and you're running a Remora. So unfortunately he summoned a Doom Caliber Knight, which is really annoying, so I can't activate Buzzsaw. So I'm just going to chill with my Kite Roid and wait for my opponent to do some stuff. Since he has to get rid of his own Doom Caliber anyway, since it's a mandatory effect. So he uses the material, then go into some dudes. Typical Resonator stuff, gains a bunch of life points, which now puts him out of lethal range, which is kind of annoying. Summons out the worst animation in the game. Only because of its dumb tail. Its tail does not match the card art tail, I don't understand. Anyway. Alright, as he's resonated to hand, tries to go into battle, and then we just kite roid him, so we don't give a shit. Alright. Thankfully, two lots of back row removal, pulling both back row. Thankfully, one was on the NMST anyway. Alright. Now we sign our buzzsaw. Go into our Remora, Xyz summon into our Spider Shard. Then we can remove the two materials, summon out our Remora. Remora brings back two fishes. Going into our Behemoth Shard. Behemoth, summon out your dude. Splash, summon out your other dude. 
I actually don't know if they have an animation yet. I haven't checked. I normally have animations turned off when I'm playing in-game, but turn them on for the uh, gameplay part. It does have an animation. Ooh. I mean, you'd hope so. It's technically a poor monster, so... It's, a, it's an alright animation. Not as good as Galaxy Eyes, though. Alright, then summoning out on top of that, the brand new boss monster, which I doubt they've uh, had the budget to make an animation for. Go number C32. Yeah, no animation. Shark Rising, lower the life points, reduce to zero. Then we can activate the effect again, making sure... I actually think you have to do it in this order, by the way, because this card only does the double battle damage when you have the Shark Drake under it as material. So making sure to attack first, then activate its effect again, it's a quick effect, to reduce the other monster to zero, so then beat over it. And there's lethal damage. You actually obey a replay that one. You won't get the, that sort of scenario too often where your opponent has too much life points to beat over. There's not that much healing in this game, normally. Alright. What was this guy playing? This is the Magnet player, I think? And this is where a, uh... Did I kaiju my opponent here? I think I kaiju my opponent. Alright, setting one card because... Well, I don't want to use up my only, uh, my only buzzsaw. In case I don't draw into another one in the following turn. Thankfully he's playing a slow deck, so... The set pass is enough to keep me alive. Activating my galaxy. Activating my... Mystical space. Now we don't have to worry about any of his back crow, so we're good to go. Turns out we don't actually have to worry about it anyway, but... <laughs> you never know. Alright. Now these cards are really annoying, because I can't actually target them to reduce their attack. So in this case, I'm just got a kaiju on, so I can target my kaiju instead. Go into my behemoth. Behemoth, summon out your dude. Activate trap card. Swap it up. Oh yeah, this dude has some thick thighs by the way, god damn. Not sure what part of it's a shark, but anyway. Alright, summoning out your wise. Paying the life points, reducing the attack to zero, and he's gone. Alright. On to gameplay number three. Alright. Every time I say why, so I can think of is the that anime that's airing recently, Ruby. Just keep thinking of that character. I'm sure someone in the comments knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Alright. Thankfully going second, which is just what we like. Our opponent has field spell, he's gonna set a card. We have double MST, so we just get rid of one of them, make your opponent use his effect early. Probably could have waited for our opponent to swap over the activate MST in response, targeting the field spell, but it doesn't really matter at this point. It's not like he's gonna... But he's just gonna add the searcher anyway, because he needs the searcher. It would have mattered if he had this field spell at the start, because then he would have got the search, which would have been annoying, because then he has the potential to special summon sling and defense. But all that doesn't matter, because that's not what he had. He had this field spell first, not this one. So, we're good to go. Mate, this dude's theme is kind of a banger. <laughs> Alright. Summoning out your behemoth. <laughs> Apparently I used Remora to flex here. Don't think I need to use Remora, but anyway. There's the Shark Drake. We need to skip the animation this time. Summon out the dude. Reduce the life points, and he's gone. He can swap the field spell all he likes. We don't care about him somebody adding his boss monster to hand. As he is already gone. Okay. Next replay. Alright. So I think the last one was a bit of a banger. I don't remember what this one was. Is this a salad re- it's gotta be salad, he's playing the salad character. Alright. So one of the other bad things when playing against salad is a lot of them are playing DD Crow now, and DD Crow is very scary, is if they DD Crow your trap card, 
Unless you have Remora, you're kind of being a spot of bother. Even if you do have Remora, a lot of times they activate in response to something like your Behemoth Shark's effect. I think you just lose then anyway, so... Yeah, DD Crow, massive counter to this deck list, which is probably why it has no chance of really being like a tournament level deck list. It's going to be more of like a KC Cup sort of a deck list. Alright. Oh, he's playing Hero. <laughs> what? <laughs> why are you playing Hero? Either way, teach you a lesson for playing Hero. Get back to Jaden, alright? That's the wrong character, buddy. Setting Miracle Fusion. Alright, let's we'll speed up this replay, let's be a quick one. Summon the Behemoth, summon out the dude, swap him over. Shark Rising, minus the life points, reduce him to zero, and he's gone. <laughs> Alright. Let's see what's the final replay. Which I actually think was a banger. I don't quite remember what I did, but I remember like being satisfied when I recorded it. Alright. Oh, it's the rank up match too. Oh, I remember, I remember what happened in this one. This was against um, Burning Abyss, actually. Alright, this was another moment where my Caesar Mora saved my ass. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is, like, because I haven't opened two ways to get Xyz monsters out, I'm going to use one of them this turn just to set up a wall so I don't die. Unfortunately, I couldn't actually Xyz summon this turn because I only have one Remora left in the deck, meaning my Buzzsaw Shark, since it only summons stuff from deck list, it wouldn't have had anything to summon. So, unfortunately, because I drew the Remora, I kind of got myself screwed over. But at least I have a wall now. I probably could have just set the beautiful princess instead of summoning this thing in defense position, but it doesn't really matter. Alright, thankfully the Burning Abyss guy didn't kill me as it looked pretty sketch for a second. I was worried he'd go into his uh I don't know, I was worried he's gonna do something to kill me. <laughs> so he even banished my monster, which was very monkous. Actually, could you even summon this in a tap position? Uh, no idea, but he didn't anyway. <laughs> Either way. Alright, now Buzzsaw Shark is going to summon out a Remora from Decklist. Go into the Great Boyven, which should now summon out the two dudes. You can see he's summoning off into Behemoth Shark. Then making sure before I use this effect, because we'll run out of monster zones, I'm going to do a normal summon. That way I can do another XE summon. XE summoning out Abyss Dweller to give everyone a boost in attack and make all these uh, annoying effects when they go to the graveyard unavailable. Pemit summoning our dude, activating our revive splash, upgrading to Shark Drake. We can watch it one more time. The thick fight, the thick thighed Shark Drake. I mean, he needs to cut his fingernails though, god damn. Alright. And finally, big dude on top of it. <laughs> it's gonna have fast forward on those. Either way. Alright guys, that's gonna do it for today's replays. I hope you guys enjoyed them. If you did, remember to leave a like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, hope to see you guys in the next one. Laters. Hey, big brother, can I watch Spongebob? Shut up, Mokuba. I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.